Oregon City. Yeah. Well, thank you for mentioning Blue Heron. We do have <laughs> a business spotlight to share with you tonight. Um, and this is a, an example of an organization that has taken um, a, a, the help that you provide, both the Energy Trust and the Climate Trust, I think, were involved in this. Um, and the uh, purposes is to help organizations use less energy because the less energy you use, the less carbon dioxide that you're producing. Um, and uh, if you don't have the money to to invest in your capital investments, then you know the Climate Trust and the Energy Trust can um, help you out. So we're, we'll take you to a good example of this. This is a Blue Heron Paper Company in Oregon City down the river. Um, and uh, the Climate Trust contracted to buy offsets from an industrial energy efficiency project that they uh, implemented. And as a result, the plant has reduced its energy consumption by 25% while increasing its capacity to uh, use recycled paper. So our newest contributor, Kristen Richards, takes us inside Blue Heron to find out how they did that. We're here at the Blue Heron Paper Company with General Manager Eric Jensen. And Eric, you're going to tell us a little bit about what you guys do here. And first of all, why don't you tell us what Blue Heron is and what kind of products you produce here? Uh, Blue Heron is an employee-owned company that really began to be Blue Heron back in May of 2000. Previous to that, we were part of the Smurfit organization. But we had an opportunity to become employee-owned, and that's what we've been now for the last seven years. We... At this mill, I have 250 employees, and we make a variety of grades, primarily newsprint, but we also make fast food bag for McDonald's. We actually make about half the paper for their bags for the whole country. We make another paper which goes into advertising inserts and that sort of thing. And recently you guys collaborated with the Energy Trust and Climate Trust to um, kind of create a more sustainable way to produce this paper. Um, what, what has the collaboration done for you guys? How has it helped you guys conserve? Uh, back in uh, about four years ago, the Energy Trust came to us really looking for an opportunity to invest maybe up to $100,000 to find ways to reduce energy in our mill. What we presented them with was an opportunity to spend quite a bit more than that, but at the same time to save a lot more electric power at a, really a more effective efficient way than what they had been doing up to that point in time. With the help from the Energy Trust and the Climate Trust, we were able to expand our dinking process from a plant that consumed about 500 tons of waste paper a day to one that consumes about 625 tons a day. As a result of that, we were able to shut down a process that required a great deal of energy. All right, great. Let's go take a look at those machines. Okay, great. Here we've got a truck from the local area delivering some of the uh, paper left over from the printing operation from a commercial printer. And we use this in place of a magazine to supply the dinking operation. We receive quite a few truckloads like this every day that uh, come from the local area, although much of what we get is bailed from uh, this, a longer distance. When we're running at full capacity, this plant will process about 625 tons of waste paper each day, a mixture of magazines and news, old newspapers. That will produce about 500 metric tons of dink pulp. Everything we make at the plant here has recycled pulp in it. About 75% of the total furnish that we use to make our paper is recycled. Some of our paper has uh, as little as 50% and some as much as 90%. It just depends on the grade and the machine we're making it on. This uh, device here is called a flotation cell. This was really the key piece of equipment that we installed with the funds from the Energy Trust and the Climate Trust. And this device here, we're floating the ink out of the fiber using a lot of air bubbles and some surfactant to come to the surface and we skim that ink off and remove it from the process. The way it works, it keeps the fiber that we want to make paper with in the process and just removes the ink. And that money from the Climate Trust and the Energy Trust helps to 
shut those other ones down that were less efficient. It, it shut others down that were less efficient, but also they consumed more energy to pump. We still have to pump this material, but it doesn't require nearly as much horsepower. So besides having the opportunity to re use less refiner pulp, which is very energy intensive, the new plant that we put in requires less horsepower to operate. In this room, we have the heart of the refiner mill. This is the location where we grind wood chips up into the pulp. This is really the most energy intensive part of our process because it involves two refiners, each of which has a 12,000 horsepower motor attached to it. When we look at trying to reduce energy in this mill, most of our attention has been focused on this area, trying to reduce the amount of TMP pulp or refiner pulp that we use. And the way we do that is to expand our capability to make recycle pulp or dank pulp. And how much do each of these use in terms of energy? Well, each motor is 12,000 horsepower. Each one can consume about 8 megawatts of power. So in this room, there's about 16 megawatts consumed, and the total mill consumes about 50 megawatts. Okay. And have you been able to reduce that in any way in here? The way we reduced it was really to uh, reduce the amount of time that this has to run. Okay. With the Before we expanded our dinking project, our plant, we actually ran this plant about 100% of the time. Okay. We had two refiner lines that we ran most of the time. We've been able to shut down one refiner line completely, and then the current line runs about 75% of the time. So we really reduced our total consumption from the neighborhood of 35,000 megawatt hours a month down to something less than 30,000 megawatt hours. We are using about six or 7,000 megawatt hours per month less than we were before, which is enough to power a few thousand houses. Here what we're doing is thickening the pulp that we made, that we ground up using the refiners over in the other building. So we just grind it up into these these fibers here so it's ready to make paper at this point. It needs to be brightened a little bit, but other than that, we just take this and blend it with the uh, recycled pulp. What percentage of the paper comes from We it? average about 25% of our pulp comes from this. Okay. The other comes from the recycle. As we look over here, we can see everything working, and when you think of a mill, you think of the smell, you think of, you know, the pollution, but not always the we, we pride ourselves in really being more environmentally friendly than a lot of mills. Our process does not produce odors that escape our plant site. When you see steam coming off of a plant like this, it really is just that. It's steam or water vapor. There isn't any chemistry involved in it. And, and that's a fallacy in the minds of a lot of people as they drive by and, and see emissions off a plant like this. It is really a much more environmentally friendly process than what they think. We'd like to thank the Blue Heron Paper Company and General Manager Eric Jensen for allowing us to come out to the plant today. Thank you. I appreciate you giving us a chance to tell the Blue Heron story. You betcha. Thank you. My name's Kirsten Richards, giving you the tools today to be more sustainable.